I'm here today to talk about a topic that's been going around the War Thunder community lately. It isn't a new topic per se, but one that's been brought up again since the most recent update. We've gotten to the point where many of the tanks added either have classified components and specifications, or are what some people have dubbed vaporware, a vehicle that ostensibly exists in reality but hasn't been demonstrably proven to exist as it is presented. The latter is usually thrown at Russian tanks and IFVs, such as the recent 2S-38, where real-world political and military events have brought into question the validity of the reported specifications of such vehicles. When it comes to vaporware, most offenders are modern, Russian, and to some extent Chinese equipment, and there is a lot of skepticism regarding their genuine capabilities simply because of the secretive nature of both nations. Reports that certain tanks are deployed with pieces of rubber or cardboard instead of actual ERA would make it seem like their tanks don't actually mount the equipment they're purported to equip, and there is a larger skepticism that they have the resources to outfit or produce their newest equipment at all in the state that they claim them to be. When it comes to War Thunder then, it brings up the valid question of which narrative should the game abide by? Should the game give the benefit of the doubt and implement vehicles as they're claimed to be, or should it exclude vehicles that can't be proven to exist as they are claimed? Furthermore, what is the threshold for whether these vehicles can be considered at all? These questions are deep and multifaceted. I think the best place to start is to decide what exactly War Thunder is supposed to be. For the purposes of this argument, War Thunder can either be a simulation of real-life military equipment and its related politics, or an action game about military vehicles. There are merits to both sides of this argument, and in fact it's not a new one. Even in the days when the game was mostly World War II only, people have said that German tanks should have their unreliability modeled or their impure armor for late war tanks. When Germany ran out of tungsten, it couldn't supply APCR rounds to its tanks, for instance. Yet, these real-world problems are not represented in the game. Importantly, the historical military position of Germany late in the war doesn't factor into the performance of the vehicles in-game. To me, this would suggest War Thunder wants to take vehicles at their theoretical optimal condition, unaffected by corruption, lack of resources, or maintenance issues. By this logic then, Russian and Chinese vehicles should be taken at their theoretical optimal condition, where the vehicles themselves are represented more so than the nations that create them. But this does lead into the other half of the topic, classification of information. Even if we assume that Russia is able to design and produce these vehicles, how can it be proven that the soft stats, that is to say, things like armor, top speed, fire control, etc., line up with the components that the vehicle is made of? This is not an issue that is unique to these two nations. We don't know the specifications of many modern vehicles such as new Abrams tanks, new Leopards, Challengers, and other NATO vehicles. How can War Thunder implement the shells and armor of these tanks when the most governments are willing to say is that they'll either defeat modern opposition armor or can survive being shot by shells of the opposition? At best, the game can make an educated guess based on what information is available, but it'll only ever be a guess. I think the solution to all these problems requires a few things. First, it has to be agreed that War Thunder is in the business of representing vehicles, not nations. If the game has to start taking real-world factors into account that surround the performance of vehicles, there will be endless issues with all nations, not just Russia. Because everyone at some point had politics or engineering interference with their vehicles. War Thunder takes real-world designs and brings them into a simulation of combat, it doesn't represent the real world. This representation has to be tempered, however. A nation can't claim to produce or intend to produce a vehicle that could theoretically never be built in the sense that it would be unfeasible for any nation to build such a vehicle. Nobody can mount a rapid-firing 120mm cannon into an IFV, but could an IFV be equipped with a rapid-fire 57mm gun, some modern thermal cameras and target tracking? I don't see why not. It's within the realm of possibility and is likely enough to be built as claimed. Whether or not the game does a good job of approximating it is another story for another time. But if it had all the vulnerabilities it would have in reality, there shouldn't be an issue. This criteria would allow both modern NATO and Russian vehicles to have a place in the game, many of which are quite impressive to imagine in action. Any implementation of such vehicles demands careful balance. If they're not added at a proper BR, they'll stop vehicles that have a hard time keeping up with them. This leaves only the issue of classified vehicles. 
In my opinion, the game will have to jump from, quote, historical accuracy to what we'll call a historical balance in order to keep going further in history. Vehicles will have to be given stats without any valid proof that lead to the most balanced game possible. As an example, the next generation of MBTs likely won't be revealing exactly how much armor is in them, or exactly how much penetration their shells have, so War Thunder will have to choose numbers that allow them to have an edge over their predecessors, but not so much so that it's impossible to take them down. This is about the only way I can see of being able to experience vehicles whose information is still classified. Both new upcoming vehicles and vehicles that still have a lot of components that are classified. In conclusion, I think any vehicle that was designed and is likely to be or have been built should be a suitable candidate for War Thunder. Because the goal is to have a game about vehicles, not politics. Whether corruption prevented the factory model from going live shouldn't preclude its existence if it was properly designed and built, as long as they aren't claiming laughably impossible feats. When they are implemented, it has to be in a balanced manner, though the nature of the game sometimes distorts their effectiveness. When vehicles are still classified, War Thunder should make a best guess based on available information and prioritize a balanced top tier. What do you think? Should vehicles be restricted by their real-world design woes, or do they deserve a chance to be represented in their prime? If you liked this video, please leave a like and comment below, and subscribe to stay tuned for more War Thunder topics.